let us start on the uh, uh, plenary session seven. So we have at the, uh, this morning that the uh, plenary session on the human lunar exploration. I can't turn the move <laughs> forward on the slides. Oh, okay. At this panel, that uh, we think that the uh, we will ask the agencies' representatives to summarize on the recent ro robotic and lunar robotic lunar exploration results, and uh, also that uh, uh, shall look at the international discussion status on human lunar exploration, and want to discuss uh, how we participate in human lunar exploration with specific notes on the possible missions as well as on the how affordable they are uh, and the benefits of uh, in investment. The panel objective is the, uh, the post-ISS space activity uh, is conceived that uh, are related, highly de heavily related to human activity uh, beyond the Earth's orbit, represented by the human lunar exploration. In view of that the sustainable space activities versus economic crisis, energy and the environment issues which human, humans currently face, the panel should discuss uh, now why we have to embark on this business with a question and the discussion on the rationale for, that, for doing so. Recently, uh, NASA completed the uh, Air Cross mission and also that uh, China and the uh, uh, Indian, you know, the uh, Aruna mission were successfully done. And also the JAXA Kangya mission also finished uh, this, last, this summer. Therefore, that, uh, we have accumulated the, uh, uh, the multiple you know, major lunar exploration results so far. Besides uh, the trans agencies discussion on the new, that is uh, the ISECG, ISECG, uh, we have uh, the accumulated se several you know, plenary meetings you know, the, by now. And the strong interest is in the uh, how that the uh, Augustine Committee report and how, what, which option is going to take, be taken. And uh, it's a good opportunity to look at uh, the recent lunar exploration results in combination with uh, the ISEGG activities, focusing its interest in above mentioned key, techno uh, key questions, most of which are not uh, discussed outside of the ISEGG members' agencies so far. We have uh, the uh, distinguished uh, participants today. That we have uh, the, uh, the, the Dr. Kendall from CSA and the Mr. Tonini from ESA and uh, Dr. Admasi from ESRO and then the Mr. Hasenga from JAXA. And uh, from Kari that uh, we have uh, the, uh, uh, we can't, don't have uh, the Jujin Ju D. Instead of him, that, uh, we have uh, the Sandio Lee from the Takari. And from NASA, that, uh, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Cook. And uh, from Los Cosmos, uh, we have Mr. Saberiev. And I'm uh, the moderator of this panel session, that, uh, the Jun Kawaguchi from Jackson. And uh, before that, uh, this, uh, I, the panel, you know, the plenary session, does, uh, we distributed uh, the, these questions to the panelists you know, to prepare that, uh, the uh, presentations you know, the, so that uh, the, those questions uh, can be uh, the accounted well. You know. I'm sure that, that uh, each panelist uh, should have uh, prepared uh, these uh, the slides. The, I will give uh, two questions after that, uh, all uh, the uh, uh, panelists uh, finished uh, the presentations. The two questions will be given. The one is, uh, uh, what do you think about the name and how do you evaluate an Augustine Committee report issued this September that, that, that may not be an, uh, the responded or answered by that, that, that even from NASA, you know, but that's it's okay. And how each agency thinks the space expression can outweigh the major civil you know, the critical issues that, that the human beings you know, currently face, such as energy, environment, economy. Those questions will be an added. The, I want uh, that to be answered from the, the, the panelists. And also that uh, if time is available, uh, we will have uh, questions and that the, you know, from that audience. And about uh, the time schedule today, that uh, time is very limited. So I, I want uh, each panelist to you know, present uh, the, uh, his presentation within five minutes sharp. You know. 
And uh, we, we're also going to give you uh, the, uh, uh, the qu two questions already, and uh, I want uh, the, uh, those questions to be answered by the panelists, and which is maybe followed by the Q&A from the audience. That is the contents of today's and, uh, the plenary session. So anyhow, that, uh, let us have that, the you know, presentations from each and agencies. The from alphabetical order. <laughs> And uh, the, I want uh, the, uh, the Dr. Kendall you know, to, to uh, make uh, the uh, presentation the, now, okay? The, from podium, the, will you, or the, there? So the, which is okay? Yeah. Oh, from, okay. okay. Good. I will not show any slides today, but thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, talk about the uh, Canadian program. Um, thank you. With respect to human and lunar exploration, first of all, I think we need to set a premise here, and the premise that I'm going to go from is that humans will explore beyond low Earth orbit within the next 10 to 15 years, the de details of which are really to, to be determined. But the moon is likely to be part of whatever human exploration architecture is agreed to by the international partners. I think one of the striking um, parts of this particular um, uh, uh, meeting, this Congress, has been the results that we've seen uh, from the moon uh, from Smart One, Kagoya, Chang'e that we saw this morning, uh, Chandrayaan and LRO. Uh, a cynic might say we have more information on the moon right now than we do on the Earth, but uh, it's certainly a, a wealth of data that the scientists can now use to, uh, to plan the next steps. So where, are, where is Canada in this, uh, in this uh, picture? We've been involved in exploration for, for some time. We're, we're a little late to the, uh, to the party, but we have been doing a robotic exploration of, uh, of our nearest neighbors. Uh, we were involved in the Japanese Nozomi mission uh, that went to Mars, uh, the uh, Phoenix, uh, Mars Phoenix Station uh, by NASA. We had the, uh, the meteorological instrument on that uh, particular um, uh, sa uh, lander. The APX, uh, we're, we're developing an alpha particle X-ray spectrometer for the Mars Science Lab, and we are contributing to ExoMars. So you can see from that list that our uh, interest, which comes from really a scientific background, is uh, focused fairly clearly on Mars rather than the moon. Um, but on the human side, we've had 15 Canadians now fly missions uh, on uh, into space on the shuttle, the space station. Uh, we are, of course, a contributor to the ISS, and uh, we will... Uh, continue to have scientific utilization of the ISS in the future. We've recently, as you may have heard from our, our president, uh, we ha are developing and have developed a long-term space plan for Canada, which has three goals. And uh, part of that goal is a clear goal of exploration. This is one of the three thrusts that the agency is putting together. And in that goal, we include the full uh, utilization of the International Space Station, uh, using the physical sciences and the life sciences, and in specifically in preparation for humans beyond, beyond low Earth orbit. Um, two goalposts within, uh, within this thrust are to be part of a future Canadian, uh, sorry, a future international pro program to the moon, human international program to the moon, and we will have, uh, our goal is to have a Canadian as part of that early wave of uh, humans that will go back to the moon. Uh, we will contribute to uh, enabling infrastructure and science capabilities to those activities, and we will participate in precursor missions that will come up uh, to allow that, uh, th those, uh, that uh, uh, goal to be reached. The second goal of our, of our exploration plan, part of our plan, is a sample return from Mars, but since we're talking about human exploration, I will, I will skip that right now. So uh, how do we think this will come together? Well, we were very active in the creation of the framework document of what is called the Global Exploration Strategy, the I and now is part of the ISEC-G, the International Space Exploration Coordination Group. And we see this as a model that we need to follow and, and, and continue to follow as we develop all the exploration plans, including human exploration plans. Uh, of course, as you know, this is a program of programs rather than a, uh, uh, a clear um, uh, uh, ISS model. And the government is right now opening doors for commercial opportunities and partnerships with the private sector uh, relating to this, uh, this activity. Now, last, my last point is that an exploration program uh, clearly has to be linked to government uh, priorities. Uh, we have to get government on board here. And so in, in our particular um, scenarios, we're looking at uh, the, the objectives of science and technology, using job creation and training, attracting talent to Canada, world-class research and innovation, 
and policy goals, uh, including international relations and, and how we position ourselves on the world stage. This is how we sell a program such as this. The public must be engaged in these activities. Uh, we need public support. So we have a strong prototyping program. We must continue to uh, provide opportunities for our scientists and visibility for the program as we try and reach that goal. And we will have a strong education and outreach program. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's wait. OK, thank you. And good morning to all. Can I get the first slide? So at ESA, we have also um, a strong interest for exploration, human exploration. And uh, after many years of uh, flight experience, we have um, accumulated um, uh, astronaut operation in space through uh, various flights. We have also in space uh, Columbus and ATV since a uh, few years. And we are also starting to carry out uh, research and experimentation in microgravity. Uh, we have also gained, through all the flights we have performed with uh, Russian and with NASA, experience in EVA. And therefore, by this way, by all the flights that we have performed, we are uh, gaining uh, interest in the public and interest also in education. The robotic part is also an important part for us, and it's an important part for human exploration. We have um, the robotic in terms of uh, assistant to uh, the astronaut, and this is a program that we have called that is uh, the Eurobot. It's a three-armed uh, uh, robot, and we also we want to develop the future, which is also what we have on the lunar surface as a help with robotic system. So, I don't know if you can So that was, that was my first slide. Next, um, we have also the perspective for ESA is as a target to continue the operation in low Earth orbit in order to increase the utilization of ISS and to prepare the, this utilization of ISS in order to prepare human exploration. We would like to develop what we call the ARV or Advanced Reentry Vehicle. It's on the cargo version, and this is based on the ATV, Advanced Transfer Vehicle. Uh, the front part will be uh, modified in order to have a return of cargo in the first time, in the first phase. And also, we want to develop uh, capabilities to enable lunar exploration, lunar lander as a technology demonstrator or precursor mission. In terms of science and utilization, we have a program, ELLIPSE, that we are conducting now on uh, ISS. And we want to continue with this program. In terms of uh, robotic exploration, we know that um, autonomous uh, robotic system will play a major role in the participation to lunar exploration. And then we have uh, robotic missions, and later robotics and robots will help the human exploration on, uh, on the moon and later on Mars. Um, in terms of um, what are the plans of uh, low Earth orbit and beyond, based on uh, the reentry, uh, the advanced reentry vehicle ARV on the cargo version, we would like to develop a man version in order to land with people on, on Earth. And then also, we would like to develop uh, what we call a cargo lander, a lunar lander, in order to support the operation of uh, NASA mission or another partner mission, but uh, in this example, we have taken the Altaya mission as, a, as an example, and this will bring uh, uh, cargo on the moon uh, at a distance not too far from the Altair uh, lander in order to support astronaut operation on the surface of the moon. And then it will be bartered by um, anything like uh, European astronaut on the surface of the moon, and uh, knowing that uh, the long-term goal of this uh, uh, enterprise is to have a human on Mars in the future. But for that, we need, uh, we understand that we need to, to uh, concentrate and to develop the international cooperation for exploration. We need to have a better coordination, to improve the coordination. We have uh, started with a group of uh, 14 uh, space agencies that you have seen on the right side. 
in order to establish uh, common objectives between themselves, uh, identifying the key capabilities in order not to duplicate the same uh, capabilities between each partner, and uh, look at the global architecture uh, options for all in order to prepare a better way for cooperation. So for human exploration, a significant, significant role is expected from European Union in Europe and also from the national agencies. And as a last uh, word, I would say that uh, we have also selected uh, six new astronauts uh, at the European Space Agency. They have started the training uh, in uh, September of this year, and these people are young enough to be able to fulfill mission on the moon, maybe not on, the, on Mars, but certainly on the moon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the punctuality. punctuality. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At this juncture, the Indian Space Research Organization is looking towards new frontiers of uh, space science and technology. But still, we have the basic premise that we must be in the forefront in the application of uh, advanced technologies for the real problems of man and society. That is the premise on which we work. The main parameters of the new Indian challenge are low-cost access to space through reusable launch vehicle technology and reaching interplanetary space for scientific exploration, resource utilization, and possibly for planetary defense. The space capsule recovery experiment, SRE, is a unique mission of ISRO, demonstrating India's capability to recover an orbiting capsule back onto Earth, precisely at a predetermined location. Meeting, uh, mastering this technology, this is vital for our human space program and reusable launch vehicle development. With regard to moon missions, Chandrayaan-1 is the first Indian moon mission, as is well known. Six of its uh, 11 scientific payloads are from international partners. Thus, this mission is an excellent example of international collaboration in exploring the moon. The amount of scientific data collected by these payloads of Chandrayaan is enormous, and it would take some more time to fully comprehend and consolidate the scientific findings. But whatever so far has been revealed is spectacular. For example, the detection of unmistakable signs of uh, water molecules on vast areas of lunar surface. This finding indeed will go a long way in mankind's future efforts to establish a manned outpost on the moon, possibly providing rocket fuel and drinking water. After the successful launch of Chandrayaan-1, uh, ISRO is looking towards its second lunar odyssey in around two years' time. Chandrayaan-2 will consist of uh, an orbiting spacecraft and a landing platform with moon rover. And continuing the spirit of uh, international cooperation, as in our first mission, there would also be the provision of accommodating payloads from other space agencies and international collaborators. However, the composition of the instruments uh, will be decided in due course. ISRO has conducted a study on the feasibility of undertaking human space mission with an aim to build and demonstrate the capability for carrying humans to low Earth orbit and their safe return to Earth. Human space endeavor gives us an excellent uh, platform to enhance our scientific knowledge, particularly in the domain of physical and life sciences. The human space program will also give us a long-term capability to effectively use the vast resources available on other heavenly bodies, be it the energy sources or mining of uh, special materials. The Earth orbital human space flight is a complex task in itself, and this study shows that it can be accomplished in a seven-year time frame. This will pave way for the next phase of study, that is the phase two, which will envisage an ISRO human mission to moon. Studies in this regard are at uh, preliminary stage at this moment. We will now go to the uh, beyond the moon, beyond the lunar exploration. The moon will serve as a location from which to expand human exploration of the solar system to more distant locations, such as Mars. There is an immense interest among our planetary scientists 
to address and pursue a number of objectives related to origin and evolution of planets, comets and asteroids, their surface chemistry, topography, their atmospheres where existing, plasma fields, and radiation environment, and probing deeper in space-time into the very origin and evolution of life itself. For this role, human missions beyond the moon are targets and visions of somewhat uh, distant future. Scientific and robotic missions beyond moon will necessarily precede human missions. Modest, robust, robotic missions with such objective are within the existing capability of uh, launch capability of ISRO. Missions to asteroids also will become important in the context of defense of planet Earth from any possible impact hazard of near Earth objects. Mitigation of such eventuality, the probability of which is very small but not zero, requires collective ability of spacefaring nations to coordinate and organize the deflection of any neo impact threat. This brings me to my last slide, which touches on the economic, architectural, and ethical aspects of human lunar missions and beyond. The ground realities of need and affordability are fundamental in sustaining any space program. The possibility of utilization of planetary and asteroid resources for coming generations of mankind is one strong factor that would support such endeavors beyond pure scientific pursuit. The benefits of the spin-off of the basic scientific knowledge in the betterment of overall quality of life on Earth are also, is also expected to be substantial. The economic aspects related to large space exploration plans essentially deal with the cost and time schedule of realization. Both of them can be optimized with a well thought out international cooperation. In the final analysis, it is also the concern and the responsibility of all space professionals that a long-term perspective is uh, maintained in the pursuit of uh, space exploration by ensuring that an environmentally sustainable approach is adopted for protecting its unique assets for the future generations of explorers and developers. Thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, my name is, uh, I, I would like my, myself, uh, my name is Hasegawa. Uh, 19 years, uh, has, uh, my career is uh, starting from uh, uh, 1990 uh, in uh, ISS program manager. It's a keyboard module and HTB development, design development. So 19 years has passed. And then the last year we have uh, uh, keyboard modules, uh, first range, second range, third range, and uh, finally uh, last month uh, we completed uh, the uh, keyboard assemblies and starting the operation and utilization. And uh, uh, one week ago, uh, uh, HTB Amman spe spe spacecraft uh, bring uh, 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 a crew provision experiment and the food bring brought to the International Space Station in uh, using the land and uh, bathing uh, by supporting by the old uh, CSA, uh, ES, uh, ESA, and the NASA and the Russian uh, colleagues. So uh, my self is assigned collateral responsibility from uh, September, uh, April 1st uh, lunar and exploration program lead. So I'm here. And uh, we would like to, I would like to uh, link the, those uh, manned space technology to the lunar program and exploration. So uh, my presentation is uh, uh, the current robotics and exploration activity at the, each agency. Our agency, this is a JAXA plan. Uh, at the left side, Selene, it's uh, named Kaguya. It, uh, Lunar orbit uh, remote sensing uh, project and that is very successful and take a picture and also HTB HDTV picture uh, was a very uh, known for the whole the world and uh, also those uh, uh, information is provided to the NASA LR, uh, lunar program also uh, Indian Ch Chandrayaan and the other uh, agencies to support to promote uh, more uh, lunar. Uh, exploration. And the next phase is uh, 2015, around 2015, Serene 2, it's a tentative name, 
but the next target is uh, landing technology and surface moving. It's kind of robotics uh, rover, and uh, to take uh, uh, a stone and analysis and uh, uh, check out, and then uh, uh, around 2000, middle portion is two, around 2020. Uh, we would like the more uh, big uh, lander and move uh, rover to the uh, uh, lunar surface. And if it's possible, we bring back the uh, sample return to the Earth. In parallel way, at the bottom side is uh, manned space technology, HTB, H2B. It's a HTB launched uh, heavy uh, lift vehicle. Uh, it's successful last month. Uh, and uh, this technology is, uh, is continued to the research for the human uh, rating, uh, bring up and also safe, human safety and uh, 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 continue to the ECLUS uh, systems uh, development. So uh, those development is uh, going to the, toward the 2020, uh, around 2020, and then uh, uh, we desire to the human transportation system in the next phase. Uh, and then combine the lunar uh, technology, uh, study technology, and the human technology combined together in uh, international uh, human lunar exploration. And uh, what is, how is the human exploration architecture to the LEO and beyond to be built and performed. Uh, of, of course, multilaterally, uh, lunar mission is a very uh, wide range of the technology required. Also, the budget is very heavy. And also, this is a human uh, common goal. So we need to uh, share uh, role and responsibility in each agency. And, uh, this uh, target is a government lead uh, target, not commercial. Commercial is not uh, uh, possible, maybe. In some part, it's a commercial uh, members involved, but the uh, total system is a human global uh, expansion. So the next item is how each agency thinks the taxpayers of the each nation uh, community can be convinced to, convinced to pay the human space exploration. It's accountability. Uh, now uh, in Japan, uh, the lead uh, the party is changed. Democ Democratic Party of Japan is now leading party. Uh, they are focused on uh, 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 health care or uh, environment, such and such. So. Uh, space is accountability is needed. It is required to achieve accountability for taxpayers. So uh, uh, benefit for the science and also cutting edge technology required acquiring and uh, uh, based on that uh, technology spin off to the, the commercial and ground systems. Uh, also national presence in the world. And also this system must be an international program to, it is required to build international program, especially uh, the main part is uh, NASA. We need the NASA leadership, the first, then uh, combined uh, all the agencies got together. So human being in instinctively expand the boundary of the activities. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, lunar program is a kind of the next step of the ISS uh, uh, partnership and got together in uh, uniformed and then go to the next step is uh, high uh, goal and to bring back the uh, taxpayers and ordinary people. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next. Okay, the, good morning, the ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, my name is Sang Yul Lee. The, this presentation is uh, uh, originally prepared by Kari President. The, on behalf of him, the, I'd like uh, introduced the Korean the Lunar Exploration Mission. The, uh, I'm the executive director the, the in CARI, the covering whole the satellite the development program. The, as you know, the, uh, I realize that this is uh, more the, the, the manned mission, but what I'm going to uh, 
to present here is the, the robotic mission. Uh, as you know, the, we uh, had the first uh, astronaut last year the, using Russian Soyuz uh, vehicle. But for us, the, still the manned mission is uh, uh, much downstream. And uh, uh, this is uh, still the conceptual. But uh, I'd like to briefly in introduce the, 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 what we are thinking. Okay, the, this is the Korean the national space plan, uh, as you see here. The, all three categories uh, are just the satellite development uh, around the, the Earth. So three category means the small micro set, uh, like a 100 kilogram class, and the, the lower orbit uh, observation satellite, uh, the CAMSAT series we called, uh, that is the high resolution electro optical or synthetic aperture radar satellite. And uh, the first uh, geostationary satellite, uh, the COMS, uh, communication, ocean, and the uh, meteorological satellite, uh, will be launched uh, the early next year. Uh, and we had the first launch attempt this year the using KSLB. Uh, if you see the, 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 the bottom side, the, you see the KSLB2 uh, with the 2018. And uh, using this launch vehicle, uh, we would like to the manned mission. Uh, uh, the current uh, the idea is a 2020 lunar orbital and 2025 the, the lunar lander. Uh, that was declared by Korean government in the November 2007, and uh, we are still the reviewing this uh, the conceptually. So this is uh, still the very uh, pre preliminary. So. Uh, during the, our the discussion and the feasibility study la, last year, the, we are uh, proposing to Korean government uh, adding one more the lunar sample return, uh, all related to the Lavatic mission. Uh, this is the, the current estimated the capability of the, our uh, the second space launch vehicle which will be flown in 2018. And uh, the required the capability is putting the 1.5 ton uh, satellite into the 700 kilometer of sun synchronous orbit. And uh, this uh, can be translated into the about 2.6 ton capability in 300 kilometer in about 80 degree the, the inclination. And uh, from this uh, the capability analysis, uh, we uh, uh, decided may maybe we can put the uh, 550 kilogram the, the spacecraft into lunar orbit, uh, transport orbit the 300 uh, by uh, the 380,000 kilometer by the solid king motor. Uh, so the remaining will be allocated to solid king motor. Uh, so that, that is the, the plan. And uh, the, the idea is that we wanted to do this robotic mission within only the capability of the KSLB-2. But uh, however, this KSLB-2 capability is not enough to make a sample return. Uh, we, we can send one sp spacecraft to the moon, but with one sp spacecraft, uh, it cannot uh, the return to Earth the, uh, due to the, the prope propellant the, the, the limit. And uh, the, the idea the, in this chart shows the, so we send the first spacecraft on the moon and the land, and maybe a small fraction of the, the lunar sample uh, it's taken and uh, back to the, the moon orbit and uh, sending the second spacecraft and the, the, we are uh, sinking the, the Langdebu and the docking and in the moon orbit and then coming to the Earth. So this, this is like a, uh, by combination of the two spacecraft, we, we would like to achieve this one. And this, this is a goal maybe the beyond the 2025. And uh, 
currently we are proposing uh, this to the government. Uh, uh, hopefully, maybe within this year, this uh, the, the concept uh, may be approved. Okay. So this uh, robotic lunar sample it mission the, using the two lunar spacecraft uh, would be the. Uh, we believe this is a good technology-driven mission uh, within uh, limited capability of the, our uh, launch vehicle. And uh, with this uh, small uh, spacecraft, also the, we are encouraging to scientists putting uh, maybe a s a small and more performant the payload uh, in order to perform the mission. And uh, the final decision is still uh, pending on the government approval, but. Uh, we, we hope the, uh, it, it uh, may be accepted. Okay, thank you. So, next to NASA. Good morning, my name is Doug Cook from NASA. Um, NASA and the U.S. are actively exploring the moon uh, through participation in, in, in uh, international missions and our own. Um, recently, uh, we flew um, experiments on Chandrayaan, including the uh, Moon Mineralogy Mapper, which, uh, the, from which the principal investigators recently published in Science Magazine some exciting results on mineralogy at the Moon. Um, uh, we also had the Mini-RF uh, uh, experiment on that mission. Um, it's too quick. Um, we also, uh, in, in June of this year, launched um, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and the uh, lunar crater ob observation and sensing satellite, uh, uh, two, sp two spacecraft on a single Atlas V. Um, just last Friday, um, the um, LCROSS impacted the moon on purpose, um, uh, releasing the Centaur upper stage and watching it go in and measuring results from that. Um, the the L I, at this point, the L I can say that the LCROSS uh, spacecraft had all of its uh, measurements going right up to the last uh, seconds, and so is um, bringing back excellent results. The uh, LRO uh, spacecraft is in orbit around the moon and has finished its commissioning period and is now um, um, sending back results as well and some stunning pictures. It will also um, develop maps of the moon that are 3D and uh, also bring back mineralogy data. Uh, we also have uh, missions in planning and uh, that one is the LADI, and, and, um, and then there's a collaboration internationally on the International uh, Lunar Network. Um, we also are involved uh, uh, very heavily in, in the, um, in the inter International Space Exploration Coordination Group and, uh, and its subgroups, including the International Architecture Working Group. So we're also planning for future human missions um, beyond low Earth orbit, uh, along with 13 other international partners. This clicker is a little faster than I, I, I am. Um, uh, just uh, at the end of this month, we plan, and on October 27th, we plan to launch the Ares 1X flight test program. This is in our Constellation program. Uh, it is assembled uh, at, at the Cape and uh, will measure aerodynamics and aerothermal characteristics during launch. Uh, it will test out guidance systems parachute systems on the booster and, um, and will bring back uh, uh, important information for loads uh, on the capsule and, and so on. So that's planned um, and uh, toward the end of the month. Um, so in Constellation program, we're developing systems that will take people beyond low Earth orbit. We also in September uh, fired the first five segment booster um, and are, retaining, are obtaining good results from that. We also, uh, coming up in 2010, have a pad abort test one. This will test out the abort system for the Orion capsule. It will be um, um, done out at White Sands in New Mexico. We're also building uh, the A3 test stand, which will test um, uh, high altitude or uh, vacuum test the J2X engine, which is an upper stage engine destined for um, Ares 1 and Ares 5 uh, heavy lift vehicle. Uh, as a part of our programs, we're also uh, developing technology that will be used in 
exploring, including surface mobility systems, uh, the lunar electric rover, um, the athlete um, robotic system. Uh, we're also developing technologies in ISRU and, and others that will, that will uh, contribute to capabilities and, and a very excellent um, exploration on the surface. We are um, deeply involved, obviously, in the International Space Station with our other partners. Um, this is important in terms of understanding long-term effects on, on humans in space um, and also testing out systems that will fly. So uh, this is an important part of our future, um, and it, it is definitely an inter international one. We have in our programs um, the development um, or the, the sponsorship, par partial sponsorship of Space Act agreements that will, uh, that are helping um, to fund the Orbital Space, or Orbital Sciences and SpaceX to uh, be able to deliver cargo to space currently. And these, these are Space Act agreements that we are, are working through milestones with these companies as they will begin to take over de delivery of cargo to space and that frees us up more to do exploration beyond low Earth orbit. It's important to develop systems to go multiple destinations because uh, there are many interesting places out beyond low Earth orbit and, and so it, it will be important to develop these in the future so that we can internationally uh, go into, into two, two other locations. And as we do this, we will be um, working toward outward from Earth um, with ultimate destinations for humans at Mars and these systems are, are important and the development of the technologies are important to get to these places. And once again I want to stress that, that um, we have uh, in our planning ha um, feel that it's very important that to continue the work of the uh, International Space Exploration Coordination Group and uh, the Architecture Working Group in order to plan help plan out uh, how these, uh, how this exploration will take place in the future, and we we intend to work with with these groups, and um, and build on the, the international relationships we currently have, and develop uh, new and, and develop and involve new relationships with other space agencies. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next to Ross Cousins. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning to all. My name is Sergei Savilev. I'm a deputy head of the Federal Space Agency of Russia, Roscosmos. Roscosmos and its subsidiary organizations are developing plans to explore the moon for quite some time. In general, moon exploration is already mapped in different governmental degrees, uh, decrees, and we have started several projects in this area, mainly in the field of automated missions, including those developed in cooperation with foreign countries. The exploration of the moon is the logical step to the expansion of humanity into the space. With automated missions, will be able to understand better the moon and the needs for its, its exploration and thus to adjust our plans for human missions. We must know what happens on the moon in terms of geological processes, where it is better to land, where we can find useful resources and many other important things that simply cannot be known by using only remote sensing. And the cooperation with foreign countries on the larger scale, not on the level when we only incorporate some smaller instruments to our own mission, but on the level when different countries develop important standalone components of the joint mission. This cooperation will give us important insight on how to cooperate in moon exploration projects. As for the human mission itself, 
To prepare it, we have to reach several milestones in the development of important mission components. New crew vehicle, launch vehicles, lunar outpost components, lunar orbital station, and facilities enabling the construction of the permanently inhabited moon base. Currently, our main enterprises are assessing different scenarios of the piloted mission to the moon. One of them proposes to make direct launch of the crew vehicle to the moon orbit, where it will dock with the lander transported from the low Earth orbit to the moon orbit by nuclear-powered reusable interorbital tug. This option gives us less a quantity of launches and more mass transported to the moon, though at the cost of some uncertainties and uh, political risks regarding the use of nuclear power. Other scenario is based on more traditional, if not conservative, approach with only chemical power departure stages, increased quantity of launches and lunar, and lunar orbital station used as terminal station for landing operations and safety checks. After thorough assessment of these scenarios, we'll choose one or combine them to start full-scale scale activities for the preparation of mission. As for the financing of, the, of this program, we estimate that expenses to implement moon exploration program during 30 years period will be around $50 billion USA or $1.7 billion per year. This amount is a bit too big to accept for a single country. So we believe that the most convenient and efficient way to explore the moon is through combination of resources and efforts of several partner countries, like we have it, for example, in the, in the area of Antarctic studies. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very, thank you very much, and uh, the, uh, we appreciate and the presentation. That uh, time is uh, limited, and uh, you know, let me change my mind and uh, to have uh, the questions from the audience. You know, the now, the we have uh, ten minutes. You know, the left. You know, and if you have some questions, uh, the please designate the who should answer your question. And, uh, is there any questions or uh, comments or remarks you know, the, from the audience? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm Bernard Frank, Executive Director of the International Lunar Exploration Working Group. And I wanted to ask you how you would see um, a precursor robotic village on the moon as a way, in one hand, to learn to cooperate between countries, to prepare some of the infrastructure that we need for an international lunar base and also as a mid-term milestone that could uh, engage uh, the countries in a realistic time scale. Who should answer it? So how would you see uh, uh, the emplacement of a robotic village with various assets that are emplaced by different countries with uh, rovers and landers? So maybe, Doug, uh, could you give your point of view? Or, but we have seen uh, also across the different agencies some uh, possible re precursor robotic program? Certainly your, your idea is one that, that, that could be made to work. I, I think it would be worth exploring that idea. Is anyone who in a he adds on the... Uh, yes, has Mr. Sengawa? Lunar surface uh, Lober. Uh, maybe the objective is uh, the wide varieties uh, in construction, uh, rob uh, robotics, and movers, and also uh, uh, take a sample to to back or the other uh, support rovers. So, uh, 
even if NASA has a lot of money, but uh, the budget of the budget is not possible. So share the role and responsibility construction is a big uh, item. Uh, is uh, maybe the NASA work and uh, the small support uh, lobby is uh, shared uh, by the uh, Japan and the Europe and Canada or the other partners to share the uh, 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 role, role based on uh, maybe ISEC-G and, and the follow-up the working groups. That's uh, one of the idea. Dr. Kendall. I think your idea, of course, has merit, Bernard, but I think what you heard from this panel, which I, at least I heard, was that every member of the panel is committed to a process using the, uh, an international coordination working group uh, approach or something similar, and if this idea would, was to come through that, uh, that process as, a, uh, uh, as a, an agreed-upon strategy, then I think the, uh, the, the, pan the, the, the members of this panel who represent the agencies will probably be very, um, very much committed to it. So there is a process. Uh, that's one of a number of areas uh, and scenarios and architectures that could be considered. Of course, we are working on an international lunar network, as was mentioned uh, by other panelists, as a, uh, an international approach to a, a small step to coordination. Uh, but I think that's the, uh, the approach that everybody is looking, f looking at, is, is to come through that uh, and that process that we already, already established. Dr. Mercy. Yes, the process of uh, cooperation in exploring uh, and having robotic missions to the, for exploring the surface of the moon are already on the way. Uh, for example, Sergei has uh, specially mentioned, and I have also indicated uh, the cooperation we are going to have in Chandrayaan-2 in, have a, in having a international participation in lander rover uh, scientific missions on the moon. I think this is going to be uh, the future uh, template in which uh, the explorations will be pursued. Okay, so is any other more questions from the audience? Yes. Yes, I would like to ask Bernard's question in a, in a different way. Uh, since we have already sent uh, humans to the moon, uh, why is it necessary to have more robotic missions before we send more humans to the moon again? So, from NASA? <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> um, I, I think it's certainly we could, we could send people uh, to the moon. Um, we, we've done so. Um, we do learn a significant amount of information from the robotic missions, and, and I think having international, an international approach to this that, that brings back data as part of robotic missions cer certainly contributes to the wealth of knowledge that, that, that we will obtain and helps inform locations that, that are of high interest. Any panelists who wants to add? Okay, Hasan was yeah, I tried to uh, say about uh, the lunar MN program and the manned programs. Uh, currently, we have uh, in Japan, uh, we have uh, some kind of uh, study uh, of the lunar exploration in the government. Uh, at the time, uh, we, uh, the Apollo program is just only a uh, small part of the uh, area survey and uh, check out. But, uh, uh, Recently, we sent uh, uh, Kaguya, Selene, and LRO and Chandrayaan is uh, looking for the whole the global uh, uh, lunar surface and uh, more remote sensing area, more precisely, more uh, deep in, uh, in the surface. And also, uh, that remote sensing is just only uh, surface areas, uh, materials, and uh, uh, contents. But uh, in real situation, we, uh, one of the uh, objectives for us is uh, to uh, know the, what uh, lunar origin and lunar uh, evolution, that is reflecting to the planet Earth situation, what is the origin of the Earth and evolution and creation, and next, the future uh, planet Earth, what is the conditions? Climate change is maybe uh, one of the uh, crisis, but uh, uh, 
what is the future uh, uh, climate in Earth. That uh, information is maybe coming from the lunar uh, study research and also some kind of the information to coming back based on the remote sensing and uh, land and move, uh, check out the uh, stone and analysis, what is the origin and the evolution and the creation. So those situation is very close to the lunar. Lunar is a very nice target, very close. Mars is uh, wrong beyond, <laughs> and Jupiter is also, but uh, lunar is no more atmosphere, so stable. Uh, remain in uh, uh, old planet Earth situation. That is very important for us. And also, check out of the uh, stone. It must be done by the uh, expertise to analysis. So uh, pick up the stone and analysis and coordination with the material people to what, what is origin, what is the creation. That, that is uh, my idea. However, that, uh, we have a very limited time. You know, that we okay. have to uh, the terminate at uh, uh, the 8, 10 a.m. sharp. <laughs> so, any other uh, the, uh, panelists from uh, such as uh, Los Cosmos or uh, the ESA? ESA? Yeah, the, the main answer to the question is the duration of the mission. At the time of Apollo, the mission were short duration. Now we want to stay longer. Uh, obviously, for a longer mission, we need more supply, and we need to bring uh, automatic vehicle on the moon in order to provide a supply for long duration missions. And this is a way to prepare the, the way we operate on Mars in the future. So this is why robotic uh, uh, exploration should start first before the human exploration on the moon. Okay, so those cosmos are Kari? Yes. Uh, <coughs> so we, we, we don't have <laughs> enough idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I agree with my colleagues, and uh, to know better the moon, uh, we have to, to, to explore the moon uh, with uh, automated uh, missions. It's, it's obviously. <laughs> and uh, after that, we will be able to, uh, to send to the moon uh, uh, men. <laughs> so. And uh, to my mind, it's very important to um, cooperate in uh, realizations of such a big program uh, like the moon exploration. Thank you. Okay, so Kari, that the Sandy and we, do you have uh, some other comments? Excuse me? Do you have uh, some other comments? Uh, no, the, again, the, at the beginning, as I mentioned, the, the, we are the, we just uh, the think about uh, this lunar mission, and uh, we do not have uh, the, the many preparations. So just maybe next time. Okay, so we wanted to hear that uh, you know the more you know much more you know. However, that uh, you know I apologize, and not ample time is you know the available today. You know, the, but uh, anyhow, that uh, we think uh, we could have a uh, good discussion the, between the audience and the panelists. And uh, thank you very much for the panelists, you know, the today.